Welcome back to Science Click. Today, time dilation. Time is an essential concept for describing our world. The passing of time allows us to quantify the evolution and the movement of objects. At first glance, one might think that time is absolute, with a single clock for the whole universe. At the beginning of the 20th century, a discovery drastically rocked our previous understanding. Relativity. Time is no longer absolute, it is relative. Each object has its own time, its own clock. And two initially synchronised clocks that follow different paths through space can meet again and indicate different times. In 1971, an experiment was carried out using atomic clocks aboard two aeroplanes. After travelling around the Earth in opposite directions, the two initially synchronised clocks showed a difference. The contents of the first plane, clock, passengers and everything else it contained, appeared to have aged 300 nanoseconds less, a small difference nonetheless detectable by these very precise clocks. How do we explain this phenomenon? How can it be that one of the two clocks had aged less than the other? Has time dilated? Has it passed more slowly? To understand this phenomenon intuitively, it will be useful to first consider a situation that seems completely unrelated. We simply imagine a meadow, on which person A walks straight ahead, at a steady pace. Counting her steps, A measures the distance she travels across the plain. On this meadow, there are two trees, and A is oriented such that on the 20th step, she passes both trees at the same time. Now, a second person, B, is also moving straight ahead, but not in the same direction. From his point of view, B does not pass both trees at the same time. He first passes the tree on the right, then the tree on the left. For A, the passing of the two trees is simultaneous, but for B, it occurs at different times. The order of passage depends on the direction in which one is moving. Let us imagine that A observes the footsteps left by B. From her point of view, A does not perceive the direction of these tracks. She only observes that they seem closer together, as if B had marked shorter steps. Likewise, for B, the traces left by A seem contracted. In reality, A and B walk at the same pace. The tracks are identically spaced. It is just a question of perspective due to different orientations. Finally, imagine that A and B walk in the same direction, but that this time, the ground is not flat. B has to walk across a hill. Again, for A, the tracks left by B appear to be contracted, as if they were shorter. And once again, it is just a question of perspective. The steps are equally spaced, but they are oriented differently along the slope of the hill, and thus, for A, they seem shorter. To sum up, when two people compare their footsteps, they can observe shorter steps appearing to be contracted, either if the directions are different, or if the surface is curved. This contraction is however only an effect of perspective. In reality, the two individuals always walk at the same pace. Now, let's go back to our initial problem. According to relativity, objects in the universe move across a surface called space-time. It is a fairly complex four-dimensional surface, but to simplify, we can imagine it as two-dimensional, just like the meadow in our example. In space-time, all objects move, and as they progress along their trajectories, the clocks of each object tick, the time they carry passes, as they move forward. The time carried by an object is therefore equivalent to the footprints in the meadow. 
the seconds that pass on our clocks measure the distance we travel through space-time. It is very important to understand that all objects, whether it is a human, an apple, a star or an atom, all move at the same rate. Within one second, they always travel the same distance, about 300,000 kilometers through space-time, but not all in the same direction. Each observer carries two axes, one they call time, tangent to their trajectory and along which their clock ticks, and another axis perpendicular to time, which they call space. An object that moves in the same direction as us seems to be stationary. The object is still moving through space-time, but on the axis we call space, it does not change position. Conversely, if the object moves along a direction different from ours, it appears to us to be in motion. Its position varies on the axis we call space. This is called speed. The speed between two objects is the angle between their trajectories. As in the meadow, if we imagine two events that occur at the same time for us, these two events can occur out of sync for someone else, who would be oriented differently. Simultaneity is relative. Be careful, this is not just an optical illusion, but really a difference in perspective. The two observers have different definitions of what they call time and space. Their axes are not the same, hence these different perceptions. As in the meadow, if we observe an object in motion compared to us, we perceive its time axis from a different perspective, as if it were ticking at a different pace. In reality, the times of the two objects tick at the same rate, but in different directions. It is this effect we call time dilation. We understand that this is not really a dilation, the ticking of time has not changed, it is simply a matter of perspective. Imagine a set of twins that is separated, with one remaining on Earth and the other making a round trip at high speed through space. Since the paths don't have the same length through space-time, at their reunion the twins are no longer the same age. In the experiment with the aeroplanes, the explanation is similar. The two planes separate, follow different trajectories through space-time, and it turns out that one of these trajectories is longer than the other in terms of distance through space-time. The clocks have not travelled the same distance, and therefore do not measure the same durations. Finally, if space-time is curved, which is the case around a massive body like Earth, we will also perceive a kind of time dilation. The seconds seem to tick at different rates for objects at different altitudes. Twins who separate, live at different altitudes, then reunite, will not have travelled the same distance through space-time, and therefore one of the twins will have aged more than the other. In the extreme situation in which the slope would be vertical, an object moving there would seem frozen in time from the outside, a situation analogous to the horizon of a black hole. To conclude, the analogy of the meadow gives us a good geometric intuition of what we call time in relativity. Objects all move along a surface, space-time, and each have their own time and space axes, such that when they are oriented differently, the durations and distances they measure are different. The analogy, however, has its limits. It is not perfectly equivalent to relativity. In particular, in the meadow, the footprints appear to be contracted, while in relativity, the time of a moving object seems to be dilated. Another difference 
In the plane, it is possible to turn around, you can go back on your steps. But in space-time, even though objects can accelerate as much as they want, change direction, their trajectories are restricted within a cone. The peculiar geometry of space-time prevents them from turning backwards. In this weird geometry, the Pythagorean theorem no longer holds. This trajectory is shorter than this one. And there is a kind of speed limit, the speed of light. We call this Lorentzian geometry. <laughs>